So you wanna be a rock superstar and live large, big house, five cars, you're in charge. Coming up with the world, don't trust nobody. Gotta look over your shoulder. All right, might as well start this video. I skipped the. I skipped the painting process and taking them apart because I have another video on painting them and another video on taking them apart. I'll link a video in the description and I'll put what I do. But um, these are the LED lights for this Shinoma. And uh, as you can see, I color matched them to the truck. And this is actually a better color match and it, it's not 100% color match compared to what was on my Jeep which was way off but um, this is what they used to look like black with the black inside the LED comes out the LED board chip comes out and as you see I left that black I could have painted it but I decided to keep it black because there would be a lot I'd have to tape off that whole chrome piece I'd have to tape off and uh, it's, it's kind of nice. It gives it a, a, a bit of an accent because I am going with the black and uh, red theme with the truck. But uh, you might be wondering why I have two of, the, two of the same side. Well, I had to order another box. There's the original box. The reason I had to order another box is because I had an uh-oh on the passenger side lens. Yeah. Left it in the oven too long. The alarm went off, and I was taping it up to paint. Um, I taped up the uh, the reflectors, both reflectors, and I taped up the uh, the reverse. I took this completely out because it comes out, um, and it looks like this. But. Um, um, uh, when I was, I was trying to get all this little excess glue off, there's just a little bit on this one, not a lot, and there's pretty much none on this one, um, that's the new one, I got some melted plastic on that, I gotta figure out how to get off, um, not, well not melted plastic, well a little bit of melted plastic, just from the housing when you take it apart, <clears throat> it gets kind of soft and it'll kind of separate, but, um, uh, yeah, you, you put it in the oven, 265 for 10 minutes with with the type of, type of glue that was on it, which was a hard silicone type glue that doesn't uh, come apart easy. Um, it wasn't epoxy like the tow mirror lenses are, but it, uh, it it's still rubbery, but it's it's very silicone. It's not like it's not this bipedal rubber stuff, which is uh, stringy, which is what I'm putting it back together with. But, um, so you have to leave it in there longer. If it's this stuff, you can actually do a lower temperature for less time. Um, but 265 makes it where you can just, with this stuff, it'll just come right apart. Before, I was doing it at a lower temperature, and you'd have to pry a little bit of it, put it back in the oven, pry a little bit of it, put it back in the oven. It's easier just to do it all at once. But, um, I filled the valleys around the outside with this bipedal rubber stuff. Uh, which I've had for a while, but um, and then all I'm going to do is take the lens, put the lens on, put it down as much as I can, put it in the oven for like five minutes, seven minutes, push it down the rest of the way if if I'll, if it you know if it goes all the way down, and then uh, <clears throat> let it sit and uh, cool off. Um, I can install it. This one, no, this is the one that has a little bit of. Uh, that's probably orange peel, a little bit of orange peel, but I think I got some uh, clear coat overspray when I was spraying the other one. Either that or I didn't get enough clear coat on it, because it, you might be able to see it. It's a little bit, it's not bubbly, but it's it's rough. The The one that I got up there is nice and smooth as glass. Um, there's some parts on here that are smooth, like that. That part right there is smooth. Um, I think all that is smooth, too. So, yeah, it must have been overspray on this side. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I'll get this together and come back. And here's one of them all put together. The other one's in the oven right now, heating up. Um, basically what I did, after I put this on, I just taped the 
the lens laid over where it needs to go, push it down as much as I can. Then I heat it up at 260 for five minutes. That's plenty for this stuff. And then just go around, pinch it, pinch it, and pinch it. Pinch it down all the way around and till it stops. And there it goes. It's all down. Now the only thing I have to do, these, there's a the hole right there I gotta seal up in these screw holes to actually get the, the lens out. They are, right, no. Oh yeah. Right there. They're covered up in goop. Which that goop is actually what got on these lenses. I think this one doesn't really, yeah, there's a little smudge right there. Uh, a little smudge right there, a little smudge right there. That stuff's not gonna, I mean, it is going to come off, but I'd have to buff it. Um, get most of it off. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, one thing I like about these, I know Mossman installed some on his S10. Um, his, the ones he got, still had an incandescent side marker. This one doesn't. As you can see, it has LED side marker, so it's all LED on the back. 194, uh, that's where the ballast res resistor goes. I, I kind of don't like the way this one's set up. You can see it's set up to bolt a, a resistor pack right here. Well, that's not there anymore. Uh, it, it comes with, the, and it doesn't even come with the, the, the nice, nice kind that my uh, Yukon has. It was a big square, and then you just, you know, stick it where you need to. These are no different than a resistor pack like you get if you go to the auto parts store and get a resistor pack, the only difference besides having splices on the end, it has a connector on the end. Which, it'll work, but technically I don't need it. Um, well, I need it now because I don't have a, 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 a flasher uh, relay yet for it. Um, but um, I will get a flasher relay, relay for it, I just don't have one yet. Uh, when I do the front LEDs, I'll put a flasher relay on it. But you can see this is just a normal auto parts store. There's a big resistor in there that's just hard epoxied in. Um, and and that's it. Um, I wish it had the kind that bolted in here, but it doesn't. But anyway, there's the 193, the 194, the connector for the resistor pack. And I have an 80-watt LED, Cree LED bulb that I'm putting in there. The same one I got my Yukon. It's really bright. In this one, it's really, really bright. Um, at least in the factory housing, it's it's extremely bright. In the factory housing, the ones on my on my Yukon are still bright. Um, I mean, they're the same bulbs, but I think the reflector in this is a little bit better than the one on my on my Yukon. But uh, I got 46 seconds left. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, come back when I get both of them and get them installed. And there it is. There's both of them. One thing before I install it. Uh, see that little rubber piece around the outside? That came attached to the headlights. Um, the glue on it though is not very good. So I had to super glue it. I just took super glue, put a bead around it, stuck it till it stayed. Bead around it, stuck it till it stayed. Bead around it, stuck it till it stayed. And did it all the way around. That's supposed to go against the paint. As you see, there's a there's one for the factory light. Goes around where the uh, paint is. Uh, yeah, uh, I decided not to put it on the bottom. Just go ahead and put it on, because this stuff's hard as a rock anyway. And to be honest, that's not even yeah, that's a little piece of rubber. <laughs> yeah, somewhat. Took a screw out there. Screw out there. Phillips screws. And just pull it straight out. There's the there's the uh, brake light turn signal. There's the 194 right there, and there's the reverse light. Go get the reverse light out. I had that out before. I don't know if I can do it with her. Here's my 80 watt Cree LED bulb. There's three right there, three right there, three right there, three right there. They're all five watts, and then there's four right there. There's a one under. 
That's the original tail light. So, that's what I'm going to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the camera down for this because I don't want to drop this. But, pretty darn close. And you got to think, this is faded. So, the truck's faded. Alright, I got the resistor pack down there. Cleaned off a spot for it. Uh, one thing I did figure out, this 194 uh, plug doesn't do anything. <clears throat> Nothing at all. <clears throat> Once I plugged this one in, I thought they didn't work. Because usually you can plug it in just a little bit, flop it. And if they don't work, you know, flop it, whatever. I plugged it in. I had to push this one all the way in in order to get it to light up. So you better hope it's the right way. Um, but these things are tight. They're all tight. I had to get a pair of pliers just to spin them around. Which is kind of good because usually you get these aftermarket lights and you put the, the OEM connector in and, you go, and they're kind of loose. No, these are outrageously tight. They also didn't leave much room right there between the running light and the <clears throat> and the 194. They're touching. Like, it took me a hell of a time to get that one in. But they're in now. Alrighty. Second tidbit. These little rings that it comes with, or retainer clips, the factory bolts won't fit. I got some longer bolts. They won't fit. Or, they fit. They're loose. It goes all the way through. It goes all the way through. They're loose. So I took the clips off the factory connector. And uh, I'm going to try the factory bolts again, but they might not work. Plus, I think I lost the other factory bolt. Anyway, get this on. All right, finally. Um, I'm going to have to look for that factory bolt. I don't know where it went. <laughs> I laid it in one of the drawers when I found those longer bolts. Uh, but luckily... The bolt up top has to be short, short like the factory bolt. The bottom one can be long, so I just went ahead and used these longer ones right here. The factory bolts like literally end like right there where my fingernail is. But uh, there it is. There's a color. I think once I clean it, yeah, that color, yeah, that color matches really well. It is darker, but again, this paint's probably oxidized. But still, camera picks it up more, but uh, still, that matches a lot better than one of my Jeep. That's really touching at the bottom. Yeah, the, these when you tighten them down, it sucks it in. So it pulls it away right here. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. Shouldn't go anywhere. But uh, that, you know, compared to that, the 194 bulbs out right here. Otherwise, that would be lit up. I never bothered replacing it. And hopefully this battery is not dead. Might buy a battery at work tomorrow. They're only like 113 bucks. 113 bucks, and I forget the warranty. That's weird. But on the brake and the flasher stop. I don't know if I. Ah, never mind. That's. It was already doing that because. When I first got the toolbox, which I don't think I've showed y'all, when I first got the toolbox, I didn't have it closed all the way and it flew up going down the road. And when I stopped, I had to turn my flashers on, but the flashers stopped flashing when I pressed the brakes, which apparently is a GM issue. Because um, apparently those GMT 400s do it, but mine doesn't. My GMT 400 doesn't do it, um, but I know a couple of my buddies do. That's weird. 
really weird. Is that it doesn't do it with the turn signals, only with the brakes. That's really weird. But apparently it, it is an early GM problem that I never had. Anyway, um show the reverse lights. Oh, Ah, oh, crap. My my e-brake is messed up. I mean, it's not messed up. I can still use it, but it won't. Uh, I can't pull the latch and it come up. Yeah. I don't know. It, it broke right after I put the radio in. So I think it's this cable, or I think it's this whole thing. I'm going to try to replace it. It's only 40 bucks. That reverse light is bright. Very, very, very bright. Even then, I mean, look at all that. It's still bright in the OE housing, but look at that compared to this. Not to mention that. Look at this on the ground compared to that. That compared to this. So yeah, these reverse lights are really worth it. 80 watts. Now they're long. They're they're really long. Uh, you have to have a long housing to fit them in. Because um, they're about yay long or so. And the bulbs there, they're about yay long. So you need a long housing. But uh, yeah, let me go and get the other one in. There it is. I did found out, find out on this side that connector's corroded. I had to go in there with the flathead and scrape it out. But, uh, man, those connectors are a pain in the butt to get on there. All I gotta do is trim, trim one of them down and it should be easier. But, uh, bugs me that the flashers stay on like that. But like I said, apparently it's a GM problem. I love those backup lights. Love them. That definitely helps out. Alrighty, well, it's the next day. It's wet and rainy. Just thought I'd get some day pictures of them. And there they are. Wow, the camera makes that look a lot darker than it is. And it's also really overcast outside, but still, look at these two. You can still see it's fairly similar. fairly similar you know colors are close very close in fact this is more of the factory color than this is because this is faded and it's been you know waxed and buffed and sand well I don't know if it's ever been waxed buffed and sand sanded it's probably been it's been waxed a couple times at least throughout its life but um um it's also, you know, painted over plastic, painted over black, so it's going to be a little bit darker that for that reason. Um, but uh, that's still a lot closer. I still need to see it in the daylight. That's still a lot closer than my Jeep ones, which is a completely different shade of green. My Jeep was never that color. Um, but looking in the door jam, uh, looking in the door jam and stuff um looking looking in the uh, the door jam and stuff uh it is the original color was pretty dark so uh so that color is you know practically a perfect match other than you know fate this has been sun faded over the years it's never been in a garage it's always been parked either out uh 
Well, it might have been in a garage on the first owner. But uh, it was never... Uh, the closest it got to a garage was a uh, was a lean-to. Well, I say a lean-to, it was a carport. But it was parked outside a lot of its life, too. So, um, you know, sun faded and everything else. Um, that still might be more of a cherry. I mean, this is a cherry metallic. That, that might be a little bit of a darker cherry. Um, but, you know... It's still a lot closer. Um, you know, paint 17 years old, whatever. Um, I don't know if I was saying it yesterday, but I, I was saying something on it yesterday about me wanting to get a bar uh, across the bottom. Um, and the one that I want to get, I don't know if I ever finished it, uh, it's only available with an amber turn signal right now. Um, it's really bright. It's only available with a yellow turn signal right now, though. Amber turn signal. Um, they should be making one with a with its all red, with a red turn signal. Um, but I don't know, you know, when that's actually going to go to production, when that's going to go out. But whenever that does come out, um, I'm going to get one of those and put down there. That'll give me a little bit more light uh, in the back. Um, but I'm also going to get some uh, reverse lights, um, some some cubes and uh our little like six inch light bars um that uh i'm i want to mount them in the bumper uh but if i go with the colorado canyon bumper like i think there's not enough room to mount them flush in the bumper so i'm probably going to mount them below the bumper um it, it all just depends but anyway i just thought i'd give a daylight look at these yes it's dark it's not sunny i wish it was sunny um, but, uh, it is what it is. Um, yeah. Talk to y'all later.